Before we start, I'll give you a quick tour of the system. So we've got a standard Behringer fixed filter bank, then my own 992 control voltages, a pair of standard Behringer high and low pass filters. Uh, the gap between is for my own 904C filter coupler, which is currently under development. Then uh, Behringer, another low pass filter, this one with the AM synth daughter board to give it the 1967 spec. Then basically we have VCAs, envelope generators, trigger delay, and in the middle there is a AM synth trigger and envelope voltages switching unit. Coming down to the row below, we have sequential switch, sequential controller, attenuators, two 921 voltage controlled oscillators, uh, the modules in question today, 901A oscillator controller and three 901B oscillators, a um, couple of modules for testing purposes, and then on the lower row, console panels, uh, a CP3, another CP3, and a CP3A, then a couple more standard Behringer modules, and then a 984 matrix mixer, which is an AM synth PCB with my own front panel. On the left, we have a 901A oscillator controller, and then to the right of that, we have three identical 901B oscillators. Um, at the moment, they're just on a single temporary cardboard front panel, um, but shortly I'll be getting individual panels for each of these. They are intended to be individual modules and you can mix and match. So you could have one 901A with one, two, three or more 901Bs. I think the MOOC specification is that you can have up to nine 901Bs on a 901A. And then in addition to that, there's the 901C output stage, which amplifies the waveforms for modulation purposes. What I'll now do is just open it up and we'll have a look at what's behind the panel. So now somewhat precariously balanced, um, we've got the back view. Here is the back of the 901A controller and it's got two circuit boards. The front one contains the controls and the jack sockets. The rear one contains the transistor-based adder and exponential generator circuitry. Uh, and then we have one, two, three, 901Bs. Similarly, they have a front panel holding the controls and the jack sockets, and the rear panel contains the oscillator. Um, power cable is looped across all four, so they're actually being fed from only one connection on the power distribution backplane. Um, this wire here that comes from the controller and then goes into the first oscillator, out, into the next, out, into the next, are the Moog ABC control signals and power reference from the controller. And just at the back here, the white wire, and there it goes falling, that goes down, that's the control line from the switch unit on the CP3 module below. Now uh, I've got things set up to give a quick demo. Um, initially not with the keyboard, uh, in the second part of this I'll then uh, connect the keyboard up. So what we've got at the moment um, is nothing. Um, the scope is just showing the last waveform that came through um, and I'm now going to plug into the sawtooth. So there's the sawtooth, um, fairly low. This is the footage controls which switches capacitors on the oscillator. Last position does nothing at the moment because I haven't got the capacitors installed there. So, just turn the volume down a bit. So, now the octaves may not be perfect on that because these are switching capacitors and they're never going to be spot on. That's one of the features of this oscillator. Um, Two octave frequency sweep on each oscillator and then adjustment on the controller. The switch voltage adjustment is meant to match it with external equipment because its optimum operating range is 0 to 5 volts input so this allows you to adjust. Those should be much closer to ideal octaves because they're actually switching resistors and similarly frequency sweep on there. So, now I'll go to pulse. Square. Um, 
My design for the oscillators does have a preset adjustment so that we can actually set it on a perfect square wave with a nice hollow tone. And frequency, pulse width adjustment, standard Moog. Okay, we'll now go to the sign, go to a higher frequency and we can hear it better. And the triangle wave. Now you will see some slight glitches on the triangle wave and that's again because I've not got the highest capacitor installed on the oscillator which is also used for filtering on the range below it. Whereas if I go to lower ranges there are no glitches. And sweep again. Now I've repatched we have three sawtooth waves for each from each of the 901Bs going into a CP3 mixer. So let's start with one. Okay, let's bring in the next one. Lovely slow phasing. And showing the octave range. And let's bring in the third one. So they're all t tuned to a rough unison. It's perhaps a bit low there. So the beat frequency is increasing a bit when we're getting into the higher octaves. Could do with a slight tweak on the tracking. Looks like it's oscillator 3 that could do, do with it. So. Let's see if we can tune one up to a fifth. And maybe put another one octave higher. Tuning does go off when you switch octaves on these oscillators because you are switching capacitors. I've taken the three outputs from the oscillators, patched it uh, through a standard Behringer voltage controlled amplifier, envelope generator, if we pan down, red light, I've got the keyboard control switched on, and if we just start with a couple of the oscillators tuned roughly in unison. Go a couple of ranges. So, as before, beat frequency is increasing slightly in the upper ranges. I need to tweak the tracking on the oscillators, but it's pretty good. It's not going way out. So that's one octave, two octaves, three octaves. Four octaves, five octaves, it goes out after the, uh, five octaves, but we can go lower. But if you want to go higher, you increase the frequency range controls on the individual oscillators. The range is probably about 
four to five octaves, but you have to select your settings to get what you want. So this is all square waves. Oh, let's bring in the, so that's just two oscillators, sorry, square waves, sawtooth waves. Um, let's bring in the last oscillator, which I've got tuned up a fifth. So there's no filters in here, just the oscillators. I think there needs to be a bit more tweaking of the uh, oscillator controller settings there for the actual scaling. Okay, one last demo. Um, we switched from sawtooth to pulse waves. So that's one. And we'll bring in the fifth. So we can manually change the pulse width. But the one thing you couldn't do with a Moog, a standard Moog, was have pulse width modulation. Well, with these we can because the controller and the oscillators each have their own pulse width modulation input. The range is deliberately limited to the same range as the original Moog had on its manual control. So, without pulse width modulation, with pulse width modulation, So that's the Fitzgreef 901A oscillator controller and 901B oscillators. Um, PCBs and panels will be available shortly. Thank you.